All right, Justin, what have you been playing this week? Okay, I've played a few games, and a lot of them are really old. Am like, I going to hate this? Maybe maybe not. Okay. Like, time-wise, how old are we talking? Like 1990. Oh, so like NES stuff. Yeah, okay, NES. Cool. Hmm. Actually, all these games are NES. Well, technically one of them is Famicom, but anyway. Same shit, different crap. But yeah, so, um, I touched upon the Famicom app on the Switch, and they have Fire Emblem on there, so I touched a bit on that, and when I first tried it, I got completely wrecked by the first boss, and that was no fun. Because <laughs> you're a weak Westerner who can't handle a game. Well, no, I, I did decided to try again on that chapter, and I did completely fine, because luck didn't screw me hard this time. Nah. And I made less terrible decisions, like sending Marth in at low health to finish off a boss, because hit rates suck sometimes. Also, additionally, if it's your main character, don't let him die. Yeah, I mean, you don't want the your lord character to die in a Fire Emblem game, because that is game over. And if any character dies in general, then, well, they're just permadeath, yeah. obviously. But, yeah, I mean, everyone was dropping like flies in that other run. It was terrible. Um, anyway, the other game, another game, was uh, Star Tropics. This is on the Nintendo Entertainment System app on the Switch as well. Yeah, yeah, that just, like, came out, like, a few days ago. Yeah, this one is not a Japanese game, actually. Specifically, it isn't. Um, but... It plays like a like an adventure game like Zelda in a way. Okay. Like, um, you kind of go, you're on this island, you go to this uh, trial of sorts. I'm not quite sure what the story of the game is, but more or less you're killing monsters in a way that it's like Zelda. Okay. And there's like a boss at the end of each chapter. And the bosses can be difficult, but I... I found it kind of entertaining. I rescued a dolphin in the second chapter, and that's as far as I got. Okay. Um, and then one more. And I decided to touch upon Dragon Quest. I don't know why I decided to touch the first one. But okay. I, I bought this on my phone, too, and I deleted it after, like, a couple of days. Okay. Mm. Um, the thing to note about any any RPG from the late 80s is that they're grindy as fuck. And they don't give you fucking directions? Mm, yeah, they don't really give you any directions. They don't give you any, like, details on what uh, things do. I mean, it's basically traditional RPG fare from that era. So I kind of had to go in just knowing that. I'm like, okay, so... The first thing you do is go into town, buy equipment, because you're stocked with absolutely nothing. So you have to get a weapon, armor, and then fight a few slimes until you level up, gain money, so you can earn the more, better equipment, and try not to die all in the meanwhile. And then eventually you want to just grind for a good, like, actually that's the entire game. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, RPG. Grind until you get more experience and more money so you have the best equipment to progress the game. <laughs> so it's just basically grinding the game. Yeah, I think I think it's also... I heard it's like a really short game too. Like it could be about... I want to say it will probably be 20 hours long. But a good 18... Oh, and that's looking short. But a good 18 to 19 hours will be grinding. Oh my god. Yeah, I know. It's, it's, that's basically what the game is. I already went through like a few RPGs like this, like Fantasy Star. Um, that's about what I expect in this, honestly. But there's only one playable character in this one, and it's just the hero. Okay. Uh, Dave, what have you been playing? Eh, most of the same sort of typical fare, keeping up with the mobile game that's somewhat taken over my life. And with the competitions that are going on with the couple games I play on the Switch, I've been busy working on those couple. But I've managed to get a particular collection together and run through some of my older games, including running through a little bit of The Legend of Zelda Oracle of Ages. Nice. Which is, which is fun with all of its time 
time switching shenanigans. That's the like, Game Boy Color one, right? Yes. One of them. Yes. yes. Okay. Yeah, because there was seasons and ages. Like, yes. Yeah, yeah, okay. It was very fun with that. But most of this is in preparation for a game that's going to be coming out fairly soon from the time of this recording, which I'm super intrigued of getting. So, wait. Um, but you're not going through Link's Awakening? You're waiting until the new Switch version, I guess? Well, there is that one, but I don't think it's coming out soon. Yeah, it's not coming soon. out soon, no. Supposedly sometime this year, but I don't think like I think it's in the, the next month or so. But the game I'm referring to is known as Sekiro: Shadows Die Twice. Yeah, it's one of those From Software games. Yes. That I I will not play because I know I will get mad at it. Well, most likely because from what I've seen and heard about it, you actually have to learn stuff. Yeah, that's not the. I just okay. So, I am not somebody who enjoys difficult games. I don't. I play mm. games as escapist entertainment, mm. not something that I want to be challenged by. This is why I play on easy mode, because easy mode in Uncharted, I can just run around and shoot people and feel like I'm Indiana Jones. Mm. I don't have to worry about fucking challenge. Now I can someone understand that. Though I'm liking this game's direction that it's decided to take, taking the idea of it needs to be more combat oriented as well as if you want an easier time you need to take more of a stealth oriented approach to things with it being more focused on ninjas and japanese uh style story it's definitely interesting but i think the biggest thing is just with its traversal especially since the character has a grapple arm and you can grapple to certain things and bounce all over the place okay I'm never going to play this game. No, I wouldn't be surprised. I, probably... try, I tried Bloodborne, and Bloodborne's fine, but I got to a group of villagers, and then I got killed, and I was like, fuck it. <laughs> supposed to learn from these mistakes that you make here, Paul. But I don't want to. Mm. I just want to be a badass who gets to kill a bunch of people and keep moving on. The crazy thing is, out of the games, that game is, technically you are the badass that goes through all those games. It's just, you just need to be a sensible one, not a reckless yeah, one. Yeah, you just have to be it. good at it. Oh, fuck off. <laughs> you and I are very different. Yes, because I play games for story and escapism, not to get good. Get good, son. Fuck off. Oh, additionally, I also had the f chance to try out that demo of uh, Pokemon Let's Go Pikachu and Eevee. And How far does that go, anyway? For the demo. You're essentially just in Viridian Forest, and as soon as you get to the exit, uh, that's it. Okay, so... Okay. Oh, that's not very far at all. Yeah, no. Mm -hmm. I mean, it... I'm tempted to buy that game, just because it's like the one Pokemon game I'll actually understand. Because it's part of Gen 1, but... <laughs> yep. Well, I think the first biggest question, how much of a concern do you have with motion controls? Do you have to use motion controls? Yeah. From what I tested with that, you yes, do. with the catching oh, mechanic. Oh, fuck off. But I haven't bothered trying it out with an actual controller with any of that. I basically was yeah. like, okay, this is how you essentially want me to play? Let's give this a shot. Yeah, it's just motion controls from what I've seen. Oh, fuck off. Though, I think Sword and Shield probably won't have that gimmick. Mm. Yeah, but they're going to have like a billion things I don't understand in them. I yeah, it's all going to be... Frick bloody British and stuff, right? What the yeah, fuck like, was that? I don't know, I'm trying to be British, no, but like, I'm not. Why can't they just make a Pokemon game for me? Why can't I just get red again? Just with updated graphics and no motion controls get and no Get the Game bullshit. Boy Advance version. There, problem solved. But I want it on the Switch, because that's more convenient. <laughs> then I can't help you with that. Well, shit. Well, here's hoping somebody Nintendo listens to this and gets the idea to do so. Yes. This one grumpy bastard who hasn't played one of our games in 20 years. Let's make a game for him. Oh, trust me, you're not the only one. But they try. At least you're better than that one particular person that went on a tirade and wrote a several-page letter to Nintendo saying of all the particular things he wanted, which essentially was everything. And then they just... Crumpled up that note and threw it in the trash. <laughs> well, it's on Tumblr, so that's not exactly super easy. I also just don't care that much about Pokemon. Bleh. 
Like, I'm not going on a letter writing campaign to get Pokemon Red back. Yeah. Well, actually, I might. <laughs> Just to troll into the fuck out of Nintendo. And, J- and Nintendo's gonna be like, fucking Gen 1. <laughs> I'll just keep tweeting them, like, I want Pokemon Red on the Switch. Make it happen now. Why is it not released? Why is it not released? Why is it not released? Why Nintendo, is... are you ignoring me? <laughs> but what about Mother 3? Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that wonderful gem. Pokemon... Release Pokemon Red and Mother 3 on the same day. A game I don't care about, and another one that I probably will ever buy. <laughs> Did you have anything else to talk about, Dave? No, I think that pretty much covers what I've been working on. Okay, now I get to get mad and yell about things. Sure. That wasn't what we already just did? No. Uh, Okay, I have a bunch of games to talk about. So, I don't know why, but I bought Monopoly for Nintendo Switch. Okay. Just because... Are you planning on playing Monopoly with any of us? No. Okay. I just, I was like, what's something that I can do to waste time while I'm on a bus or something? I know, I'll buy Monopoly. Fortunately, it's trash flavored trash. I mean, it's it's just that game version that's out on most consoles, or? I guess so. I just, I used to have the iPhone version, which was really nice because it was just basically like the board and your piece would move around and there wasn't all this fancy animation bullshit. Oh, since it's on a console, they gotta. They gotta make it look purdy. They gotta give or put that power to some use, supposedly. But I really, I just hate like the way that it's. I just don't like it. You can turn off animations, maybe? I don't know. But I just... like. Here's what I want. I want the version I had on PC in 1994. Well, I want the board (laughs) game, so I buy the board game. But you can't exactly play Um, that all too well on a bus. (laughs) Um, Yes, you could. (laughs) Just with my experience with any of those sorts of things dating myself quite a lot with this, but are you talking about, like, specific disc-type sort of games, in my case, that I got out of a cereal box? No, no, this was well before that. This was, like, on a floppy. Oh, okay, so more older older. style. (laughs) That's what I said, 1994. Essentially, like, what your mobile game was, but on old-style PC and what it did. Yeah, it was, like, it was a lot like the iPhone game, where it was just, like, here's the board in really crappy, like... Like, 8-bit graphics, and they use, like, 4 pixels for the board. Well, okay, maybe 10. <laughs> and then you moved around, and the game was great. Because I didn't have to think, and there was no fancy animation bullshit in a board game. Didn't know we were playing on Atari. Oh, it was so good. <laughs> I don't care what anybody says, it was the best. Anyway, uh, yeah, Monopoly on Nintendo Switch. It's fine if you like Monopoly, but I don't really like Monopoly that much. Anyway, moving on to something more modern than Monopoly. We move on to Steamberg, which was a puzzle game I bought because the premise sounded cool. Okay, so basically, you're an inventor in, like, I think the 1800s, and you invent some, like, electrical thingy. Mm. I don't know what the fuck it is because the game doesn't really fucking tell you. Mm. And all these robots come and attack the city you're in, And you have to, like, use these little energy balls that you have to, like, lure them into these Tesla coils to destroy them. Mm -hmm. And you have to pick up these little, like, green gimmicks all around the level. The problem with this game is the controls. Which is never a good sign in a puzzle game. Mm. Mm. So, you have the, like, what you do is you're, like, so the robot's, like, here, and there's, like, a wall, and then you're over here, and you throw the little electrical thing so the robot goes over there and then slowly follows to get to the tesla coil the problem is controls are super finicky so like if you if you're getting ready to throw and then your thumb moves like a nanometer to the left your throw goes whoop way off to the side ah huh. that or you have to be so precise with how close the robot gets to the tesla coil that it pisses me off because uh, it's like, if you're like, so it's like you have to be within, let's say, like half an inch. But if you're like 0.55 of an inch, it won't register. Hmm. So it's it's super finicky about how close you have to get. It's just, 
It's so poorly designed, but it's such a cool concept. Hmm. Moving along. Not Not, a brain buster. I bought this game because it was like 60 cents. That's always a good sign. <sighs> well, it doesn't surprise me with that penny game that you went for. <laughs> yeah, really. I like trying out these cheap games because I might find something good. And I did. We'll get to it later. Hmm. So Not Not, I, it's not a bad game. It's just, it's an iPhone game. Which is... Yeah. Well, yeah, that's so not too surprising. So basically, you're this little you're this little dude who's on like um, a cube, and it'll say like up, and you have to like hit the up arrow, or it'll say down, and you have to hit the down arrow. I mean, but you have to move like really fast, so you don't really get time to think. Mm. And occasionally, like it'll screw with you, and it'll say not up, and you can go any direction but up. Uh. And if you go up, you die. Uh, it's super simple, but it's like it's actually. Like, it's not bad, it's just kind of boring. Meh. Uh, so now we get to a game that was actually good that was like 60 cents. Hmm. Uh, it's a game called Millie. Do uh, you ever play Snake? Um, the one where you're eating a pixel and you grow a pixel larger? Yes. Yeah. Okay, this is that game except prettier. Okay. So, like, it's... It's not... You know, trying to be anything terribly original, but it's still a fun puzzle game. Because mm. it's just like, okay, like, this is just a fun puzzle game that it's just what it says on the tin. Mm. Uh, and the last game I'm going to talk about this week is Super Blackjack Battle 2 Turbo, The Card Warriors. Which is <laughs> the best name for a game ever. I don't know if there was a Super Blackjack Battle 1, but I kind of hope there wasn't. Just need to take all the words and shove all them in the mouth to try and save them. So, this game is basically a parody of Street Fighter 2, but instead of fighting, you play blackjack. <laughs> against your opponent. <coughs> so is it just blackjack? Yep, against your opponent, and you have to bankrupt them before you run out of turns. It's the dumbest thing ever, but it's so fun. I think just with that premise, I just have one question. Does the actual screen while you're playing the game actually look like a fighting style battle sort of? No, you're kind of at like opposite ends of the table and you like face each other and mm. the dealer's in the middle. Oh, uh, okay. But there's nothing like a health bar sort of saying how far you have to no, go. No, that's your money. Oh, uh, okay. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah, yeah. It's super good and super dumb and I love it. Because, I like, this. make more games like this. It's dumb. Oh, it's so good. Uh, I did buy another game called Tactical Mind, but I haven't had a chance to play it. And it actually looks like a good puzzle game where you have to actually learn how the mechanics work. Mm. <laughs> Paul, I didn't think you actually liked thinking. I do. I love puzzle games. I just also love shit games. <laughs> sometimes but shit you, games are great. Sometimes you need to give your brain a rest and just laugh at the ridiculousness. I'm just not one to buy shovelware. You should give shovelware a try, Justin. It's very fun. It's just the issue that there's so much of it and you gotta shovel through a whole lot of stuff. And occasionally you find something like Millie that's actually fun. Nice the up -yams. Yeah, there's just a lot of stuff that's being released on the Switch, like, like almost to the quality of the Steam store, <sighs> which isn't a good sign. Well, I mean, yeah, but like, I'm all in favor. If a game is under a dollar, there's a good chance I'm gonna try it, even if even if it's a penny and I still want my penny back, because <laughs> that game was fucking unplayable. Well, it is, but it's also incredibly simple, and it's one of those Battle Royale games, and it's just, yeah. Also, Tetris 99 is still a lot of fun. Oh, yes, yes it, it is. is. I, I I love that one. Although, I kind of just want them to release regular Tetris, because I just sometimes want to play Tetris and not be bothered by everyone else. And that's what I have Puyo Puyo Tetris for, although you probably wouldn't like the aesthetic. What is it? Well, because... 
Like, there's characters and stuff, and there's also Puyo Puyo. I don't know what that means. It's essentially Tetris, but it has a whole bunch of silly anime people shouting out oh. me, like, Congratulations, you got Tetris! Oh, I'd be ill. Exactly. You wouldn't like the aesthetic so much. Yeah, but you can't just say you won't like the aesthetic, it's Puyo Puyo. And then I go, what the fuck is Puyo Puyo? And you go, it's Puyo Puyo. Puyo yeah. Puyo is another puzzle game that uh, has, like, the... The Similar. gummies that have to line up, like, four of them together. To, oh, okay, uh, yeah, yeah. Break apart. Yeah, I know what that is. Yeah. Mm. Okay. That's what that is. It's like Dr. Robotnik's Mean Bean Machine. It's exactly yeah. that. Oh, that's exactly what I was... I'm like, why yeah. didn't you just say that? Because that... Because the game is called Puyo Puyo. Because the two no. games, despite no, no. the fact that they're similar, are not <laughs> the same thing. It's Dr. Robotics Mean Bean Machine. I don't know why you have to give it a different name. Because <laughs> it's never been called Dr. Robotics Mean Bean Machine since, like, the early 90s. I... What if they gave you a texture pack to make it look like that, though? But... Just think how many more copies they would sell. I mean, I would buy one if it was called Dr. Robotics Mean Bean Machine. <laughs> of course. <laughs> No, no. Dr. Robotics Mean Bean Machine 2 Turbo and The Tetris. Bean Warrior. <laughs> Featuring Knuckles. Yes! <laughs> With a secret unlock of Dr. Mario. <laughs> and now we just bring Dr. Mario in the mix. <laughs> yes, make it fucking absurd. No, no, fuck it. Dr. Luigi. It's time for Luigi to get I think there out. has been a Dr. Luigi. Sorry. What? I think on the Switch when they had that one particular it was Dr. Either, Mario It was either uh, Switch or Wii. One of those two. There was a Dr. Lu... Oh, I wanted it to be Nurse Luigi, though, because he's always a bit shit compared to Mario. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, not even, like, Nurse. He should be, like, Care Aid Luigi. Janitor Luigi. No, he should be a step above Well, he does get that vacuum cleaner in that one game series. Yeah. Oh, I've never played any of Luigi's Mansion. I should probably do that at some point. Ben. I also bought the last day of June, and I want to play that for next week. Neat. Mm -hmm. Because that game's supposed to be really good. Oh. Uh, and I bought Max Payne because th there was a big sale on the PlayStation Network. Oh, oh man. And I've never played Max Payne. And mm. that game's supposed to be really fucking trippy and I can't wait to play it. Mm. Where do you yeah. Alrighty, do either of you have anything to add? I got a lot of games to go through, but it'll be neat. I have a few hundred to go through <laughs> between Steam and PlayStation. And I'm still finishing <laughs> RPGs. Yay! Oh, I got The Division 2. Because oh, I got it for free. Oh, right. oh yes. Right. <laughs> I wasn't going to fucking pay for it. Mm. So I might play that for next week, too. Let's, uh, who knows? Anyway, until then, I'm Paul. I'm Dave. And I'm Justin.